Welcome to the at-home edition of Rocket League Central. I'm Brody Leafax Moore, and we've got everything you need to stay informed in the Rocket League scene. On today's show, Gridwatch will take you through the Oceanic Major. We got a double tap all about Lethemir, and of course, all the memes in Breakout. First up, we've got a new limited time mode in Rocket League. That's right, it's called Gridiron for all you American football fans out there. You can hop in and play some four-on-four -four Spike Rush-esque style football. It's interesting. It's chaotic. You need to relearn how to play the game to be able to play it properly, uh, but it's really cool. In addition to that, we also had the Grid Iron Game broadcast on the Rocket League channel with a bunch of Rocket League personalities. So go check the VOD if you're interested in that. But that also led us right into our next subject for Grid Watch. That's right, it led us into the Oceanic Major for Rocket League Championship Season X Winter Split. <laughs> The first major of the RLCS Season X Winter Split has concluded, so it's time to take a look at the competition over in Oceania, the triumphs, defeats, and upsets that kicked off the Winter Split's endgame. The biggest underdog story of the event was Riot Gaming. While they weren't quite able to finish off the major, their impressive performance and dethroning of multiple top-level contenders have made them a team to watch. Barely qualifying for the Major via tiebreaker event, the deck was stacked against Riot from the start. Acquiring the roster of Attack of the Invisible Ninja, the winners of the last regional event, before the Major certainly paid dividends, as Riot managed to defeat Renegades, one of the favorites to win, in only their second round. They have aspirations, serious aspirations, and expectations of winning this whole Major, and they are being pushed to the brink far earlier than they would have expected. Oh. Loose in front again, and Walcott beats CJ to the bunch. Nobody's back, by the way. Spy knows. Open net, and it's Let's Riot go. moving on. Oh, Riot just took down Renegades, and it's because Siki got bumped the whole way back to the orange half. He raced back, but it was completely futile, Stacks. Oh my gosh, Renegades gets sent to the lower bracket in a sweep. While they were sent down to the lower bracket after a crushing loss to Ground Zero Gaming in the winner's semifinals, they were not deterred, battling through the lower bracket and taking down regional titans like Mind Freak in the process. Their lower's finals match against Cringe Society proved to be their greatest challenge yet with Riot only emerging victorious in this seesaw set following two extremely close back-to-back -back overtimes. Towards the goal, Spydoge puts it high and Walcott gets zoned by Jules, but there's no follow-up from the rest of Cringe. And you know, Cringe has already lost their one overtime on... Yep. And a wind-up rotation and it's through! They pulled them all up to the front, pinch it through, Leduc sends Riot Gaming to the Grand Finals. Their opponents in the Grand Finals were the very team who struck them down in the first place. Ground Zero Gaming. Having glided to Grand Finals with very little resistance, barring a close match against Team Fenrir in the quarterfinals, GZ made it clear from the drop that they were a force to be reckoned with. They need it soon. Versus one more crossbar down off the pass from Express. It might be too little too late, wow. Turtle. Ground Zero with another statement. Things looked dire for Riot at first in the Grand Finals, as Ground Zero took the first game of the set, with it looking like they would continue their sweep of the Major. However, Riot surprised everyone by rallying and pulling off a near sweep of their own, resetting the bracket after a dominant 4-1 match. Rolling along and straight down, and just like that, Riot 11 seconds from the full reset. Can they do it? Nine. Eight, Express to Torsos in the corner, looking for the tie game. Across to Amphis into the corner, and oh, he comes back down, and Torsos will try, oh, and bounces no. down again! Express puts it high, and Spidos tries, he'll keep this one away, and oh my goodness, Express, one last chance to Amphis, to the goal, oh, block to the gosh. side, into the ground! But Ground Zero were far from finished, and they were about to show the world why they'd been the favorites to win ever since the very first week of the winter split. Rallying hard, GC put their game plan back on track and eviscerated Riot in yet another 4-0 sweep, capping things off with a 3-0 blowout as if to say, yes, we really are that good. With seven seconds left, they got a score on this touch, and it's behind oh. them all. It's all over. Amphis will put the nail in the coffin, the dagger in the back. 3-0 for this game. Again, it's been all ground zero in the second series. What a roll. 
from Ground Zero. With this historic reversal, Ground Zero claimed the title of Oceana's top team, and essentially secured themselves a spot in the eventual World Championship. With the other regional majors fast approaching, GCE have set the standard that the rest of the RLCS Season X Winter Split's best contenders must meet. And now joining me, it's an oceanic expert and one of the most huggable people from the region. It's, of course, David Lane, <laughs> a.k.a. Yummy Cheeseman. Thanks for joining me, man. Hey, I miss I miss our hugs. I need to I need to go back to 2019 <laughs> at this point and uh, and hug you once again sometime. Uh, if we all do our part, we'll we'll get through this together. So and we can hug once again. Mm -hmm. uh, as you guys can tell, we've clearly just come off of a very important business here. Uh, we've just finished the uh, the oceanic major where uh, of course we had an expected winner we gotta give congrats to ground zero gaming i want to get to them in a second mm -hmm. first i want to just talk just the vibe coming into this tournament this major um for you and uh for the team and for all the players as well for oceania what the the ground uh looked like or like the the lay of the land uh you know we talked about some sort of big three beforehand but now it seems like that's gone what, what did it look like mm -hmm. coming into the this major here just in general well, yeah, we had the big three of the last major. We had Ground Zero, Renegades, and Cringe Society just clearly on top. And they got toppled by Mind Freak. So that started, I think, the doubts in everyone's mind. And coming into 2021, after Ground Zero got two wins, it shook up even more. I think the Christmas break was absolutely ridiculous. Everybody just either yeah. went on the grind or took a holiday. And nobody knew how everybody was going to go in 2021 in the major. We didn't know who was going to do well, who was going to go poorly. Uh, and that's an exciting time, I think, especially in OCE. But across Rocket League, we've always had very clear favorites, but that was blown out the window. So it was a very exciting and, and time. And just OCE. from the outside perspective, a lot of people may have noticed, and we heard the, the sentiment as well that, oh, man, this is exciting Rocket League because of the incredible highs <laughs> and some of the incredible lows. It was very back and forth sometimes. One thing that really uh, took me and I think a lot of people a surprise was just the, the, the massive increase, it seems, in the mechanics in the region seemed to really take off. Is that mm. something you guys noticed as well? Well, especially at the lower level, outside of the big three or even the mm -hmm. fourth and fifth teams who were pushing towards that, uh, that top. Outside of that, we never really had depth. We had people who just couldn't <laughs> hit the ball half the time and, and a lot of problems. Uh, but now, with the new format, with the fact that te teams are playing so many series over a season, you know, five times, sometimes 20 times as much Rocket League as they ever played before, and in so much more of an open environment that Cyanix has created, it has made it so that these teams are able to improve at a much faster pace. So they were able to really put on a show and have much better mechanics. I think the mechanics at the top may be roughly similar with the exception of Ground Zero, who uh, are the best mechanical players in the region. Yeah. Well, uh, that actually brings a, a question up too about uh, the you know the new format with this season. Just across the board, there's there's more games. Mm -hmm. That is that is undeniably noticeable here, that there are more games of Rocket League being played than ever before. Uh, do you feel like that's had a huge and positive effect on the, uh, on the players? Like, what what have the oh, vibes yeah. been from them? It's a, it's just incredible because previously you go back to uh -huh. six months ago, you would play in an open qualifier, hope to come top six so that you can play for the next six months. If you failed to even come that top six, if you came seventh, half mm -hmm. of your year is over for Rocket League. There was not really anything else to play for. And yeah, all of that was do then done in seven matches over that season. And if you didn't come top four of that, your season was yeah. over again. Uh, now you, you can fall short. You can come top 16 and not make it into that top eight. You've already got some experience in that top 16 against the top teams and against some teams that are, you know, maybe at the lower level that you can get some wins and confidence over. There's a clear difference uh, and increase in, in how well all these players have developed over that time and I want to that brings us of course to to our winners here though uh ground zero gaming let's talk about them they just won this major they came from the upper bracket they ended up getting bracket reset by Riot Gaming who made quite the lower bracket run there uh but in the end it, they just clicked and then 4-0'd in that second one so for ground zero gaming do you see a definitive this is uh, the the Dignitas of old, or the Renault Vitality, uh, or now case, the BDS, 
that's taking over the region that people are going to be striving to beat? Yeah, BDS is the one to go for then. I mean, Ground Zero, in my opinion, should have had the Grand Slam, all four, you know, the three regionals and the major as well, after taking the major. They kind of had a really, really rough last uh, split where they did lose to Riot Gaming in a reverse sweep, which is the 12th best of seven reverse sweep to happen in the entire six years of Rocket League. So that shows you how rare it is. And they were having a bad day and still almost won the entire thing. Uh, so they are very, very, very yeah. clearly the top dogs of OC right now. They're pretty much secured worlds. They have the two best mechanical players in the region, backed up by two of the most experienced players in the region. In fact, Torsos, you'd argue, is the most experienced player in the region. Uh, so they have every recipe for success. But the thing that impresses me about Ground Zero goes back to that mentality. They do a lot of off-the-pitch work, a lot of uh, sleep psychology, a lot of, uh, you know, grinding with uh, psychologists and mental coaches and just have a really, really good attitude towards grinding and practice and, uh, and improving. And that's, I think, a, a big step that a lot of other people are missing and a huge advantage for them. Uh, Yummy, thank you so much for joining. Can't wait until we can actually hug IRL. all by himself long clear it's off target first killer will have the catch for free finds turn throw on the wall back down to first killer with a full tank saves it off oh. target no way you can't stop him first killer gets another no. one like you said the efficiency pass to turo pass back to first killer one two one and that is in the top Takes his time getting this to the ground, hoping to get some panic out of him. Closes it up here a little bit. Can Justin close in time? Taroko puts it high. Justin oh, back out to Squishy in front of the box. Back in. No, it's off the post and out. The accuracy not quite there on a very well, difficult shot. Squishy it. to close back in again. Yeah. And the oh. first killer off the post. You gotta be kidding me. What a play. Gary G alone in the blue right now. Squishy closes on this one. He's got Justin in tow. We'll look for a full press here. Garrett G getting demolished onto another, and he goes for the hound on the other. Oh, he got it again. Target. Oh my goodness, Garrett G cleared the entire defense out for this. I'm pretty sure Squishy missed that first flip reset too, but you're right. He 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 bought Squishy time to go back. And it's taken away, but Envy. They have not found the clears. They have not found the boost. Instead, the ball finds their net. Arsenal, clean double. Arsenal looks up and see that glass completely clear. So go ahead and pass it up to yourself and put it right underneath that crossbar. Back well, you miss those, you're getting scored on. It's a great stuff from Jamal Jabari, but they're still on the back foot and Atomic rifles in the winner, 2-1. Clinical. Envy, just clinical on the counter attack once again. Now that you've caught up on the best plays of the week with Hot Shots, let's make sure you guys don't miss out on the more lighthearted side of Rocket League as well. It's time for the breakout. First up, Nadia wants to say he's sorry. The best thing about those situations is the longer it goes on, the more mind gamey it gets that you just keep diving because you're like, surely this will be the time that they hit the ball. And it just gets worse and worse on the receiving end. You could just, you may as well just sit there. Just, just let it happen. Anyways, next up, Mick JDM says he was just casually messing about in free play.
Yeah. Just messing about in free play. Mine looks like that too. Yeah, sure. Okay, get out of here. Moving on. Flair RL has a bone to pick with his psionics broker. Rocket League item shop stocks only go up. We like the skin. Hold the line. Diamond hands. We're going to the moon. Our next one comes from Marcus NL, who follows the rules and is rewarded for it. You follow the rules, the rocket gods are pleased. Finally, SF Pencil took his doge coin for a ride. When you talk and smack and realize that they're about to swing back as well, SF Pencil assures us that no dogs were hurt in this making this video because Let's be real, ankle biters aren't real dogs, are they? Moving on, Lethemir proves that you can be an OG pro and an innovator in this week's Double Tap. Lethemir is something of an esports renaissance man. Over the course of his professional Rocket League career, he has taken on the roles of competitor, coach, community figure, and content creator. But throughout all of these experiences, has always made it his goal to share his passion and enthusiasm for the game with the Rocket League community. Lethemir's competitive gaming career started not with Rocket League, but with Counter-Strike Global Offensive. Despite reaching the impressive rank of Global Elite, Leth found himself growing weary of the game, stating he felt it was oversaturated. At the urging of a friend, he started playing Rocket League in 2016, with the intention of going pro from the drop. The Canadian competitor took to the game quickly, and it wasn't long until he got his big break, as less than a year later, Lethemir qualified for the RLCS Season 3 World Championship plan. While his team, Denial Esports, ended up getting sent home after just one win, they did earn the distinction of being the very first sixth seed team ever to beat a third seed team to qualify. On the world stage, with five seconds left, Denial Esports is going to be sending Selfless home. Unfortunately, I want to see all my friends here, but it can't be that way. And of course, they want to live this moment as long as possible, getting another goal here. Just adding another second on the clock. There it is. I mean, a good fight from Selfless. They fought hard. Unfortunately, again, it's just... I, I mean, Pluto's a great player. Just couldn't find that chemistry, though. I mean, maybe a different story with Dapper, but we'll never know as Selfless is going to go home. But they fought hard. They fought valiantly. we got to give a round to them. In Season 4, now under Ghost Gaming's banner, Lethemir turned heads by securing a second place finish at the North American Regional Finals and winning several MVP of the season awards in the process. While it would sadly be the final time that Lethemir reached the World Championship land, Ghost did not go gentle into the night, managing to defeat Mocket Esports and nearly going the distance against Cloud9 in a narrow defeat. Playing both sides of the ball so strongly for Ghost and their defense is holding on 20 seconds left and they're up on offense again. It's looking like Ghost has got a clean hold on this one. So difficult for Mocket as well, all that time, all that boost, and nothing for it. 40 seconds off the clock, and they're just not able to capitalize. As we get down to this last 10 seconds, it looks like Ghost is going to hold on, answering that question, stop doubting us. Lethemir, everybody has stopped doubting you now. The desk was split. Ghost takes this series, staying in the upper bracket, and we'll see Mocket playing to the lower. After a few more seasons of trying and failing to reach the land again, Lethemir saw the writing on the wall. Pro careers can't last forever. And there were other ways he could contribute to the game he so loved other than competing in the RLCS. And so Lethemir decided to branch out in a major way, first trying his hand at commentary, then joining Mouse Sports as a coach. So underrated at times because he's been in the scene for so long. Yeah. It's, it's almost like we forget to talk about how long he's been here, that he's a veteran of the game in general. And he, he reminds me exactly of, of Turbo Pulse. You know, get into an overtime with Cookster. He transforms into another player, another beast. And you do not want to go up against that. And, it, you know, even considering the fact that they have the expertise as well with Lethemir uh, yeah. as the coach of this roster, there is a lot of brain power, a lot of confidence, and a lot of expertise coming out of the roster. And the real question here is, is the, the new blood of the peeps enough threat and enough pressure to break that consistency that this roster has been able to display, even with the adjustments? During this period, he also developed twin passions. The first was Online 1v1, which saw him quickly rise through the ranks to achieve the sought-after Grand Champ rank and now Supersonic Legend tier, putting him in the top 0.1% of all 1v1 players, a distinction he still retains to this day. 
See if he can make an awkward touch here. He does. Kind of gives it right back to me. And that's a really, really quick rush. That's really good from him. Uh, right there, I should have realized he was uh, able to boost before I could to get to that ball. Um, with that awkward touch. I really should have just thrown it to the side. But I tried to like be a little bit greedy and go for the boost. Uh, or the shot, I mean. Oh, wow. He looked like he was way off the mark there. It's okay, though. There we go. 14 boosts. It's fine. Not sure why he's staying on this. He's way out of position. Should be fast enough, and there we go. The second would end up defining his post RLCS career, content creation on YouTube. Lethemir, who before getting into competitive gaming was an engineer by trade, wanted to put his expertise to use. His big idea? Creating elaborate custom maps for Rocket League, including recreating popular games such as Fall Guys and Among Us with some incredibly clever use of in-game and made assets. I'm pretty sure it's Frank or Go. I don't think Go would self-report because he's new. I'm pretty sure it's Frank or Go. Pretty sure Danny's good. Okay. I'm really scared of him. I'm gonna run. Okay, he's leaving me alone. <laughs> okay, this is second wires. James. You son of a bitch. His YouTube success led to Leth dropping coaching to focus on content creation, which in turn led to Space Station Gaming taking him on as the team's official content creator in January 2021. While his RLCS days may be behind him, Lethemir's continued excellence in both YouTube and 1v1 proves that hard work, creativity, and ambition most certainly pay off. In all honesty, I gotta, I gotta be real. It's just not fair. At the same time, Lethemir is one of the most hardworking individuals I've ever seen. I remember sitting down with him while he's editing daily videos, while we're casting, or after a casting a tournament, and then uh, he's also at the same time coaching a team. At one point, he was doing all of this at the same time. The man is a hard worker. And again, it, it, it pays off with that kind of schedule, that's for sure. But that's all the time we have for today. Make sure you check out all of our content on YouTube and hit us up on Twitter at WatchRLC. Thank you so much for watching. And to send you out, here is your weekly backfire.